Barbara Hankstenberg again from Wilds Art Studios coming at you for another episode of Creativity Sparks. And today is Keepsake Artifact Art. That's a mouthful. We're going to start with my treasure chest here. And let me talk to you a little bit about what Keepsake Artifact Art is. And then you're going to know what you need to bring to your table so that you can do your own Keepsake Artifact Art. One of my keepsakes is this beautiful book. Look at the cover of this book. I've had this book since the 1980s, I think, and look how chock full it is of keepsake artifacts. Now, keepsake artifacts can be ticket stubs. They can be um, mailers that you get in the mail. If you go to a play, they could be a program from the play. They could be important pictures. They could be important notes from people, something that touched at your heart and you want to hold on to. I keep them all in this book. This book, I just turn a page and I stick something in and then it's to be found years later perhaps. And it's always such a nice surprise when I see it. So let's look at some of my keepsakes in here. I have, let's see, oh, look at this. I just turned to this page and it is a newspaper clipping of my father and he's playing baseball with my nephew Kyle and so this was from 1988 Whew. and it's from Willimantic Connecticut and this is important it brings back memories of being at this little play baseball game let's see what else I've gotten here hmm I've got oh friends of mine this is Karen and Sharon Beebe, and this is from, let's see, I'm going to turn them over. Karen is age 12 in 1987, and Sharon is 13 in 1987. And these are sisters that live down the road from me, and I used to actually babysit them, but they've continued to be good friends of mine. So it brings back memories of them and all the fun we used to have. Oh, and this is a playbill of a play that I went to in Canton, Connecticut, in, hmm, it doesn't have the date, but a while ago, probably in the 1980s. And so this is something that I don't really remember going to it, but it must have been important at the time. And so I held on to it. Let's see what else. Oh my goodness. Newspaper clips, things, newsletters. Oh, and look at this. This is a picture, two pictures actually, of my mom. So this is probably in the early 2000s. And this is a picture of my mom, which I hold dear because she's got a beautiful smile. And then let's see what else I got. Oh, and a, in a this is a um, concert ticket stub for Arlo Guthrie. And this is when I went to see Arlo Guthrie in concert. I always love Arlo Guthrie, and so I try to see him every time he comes around. This is from 2007 from Torrington, Connecticut. And so that was important. But you see how all of these things come together and they're in this book? This is like an indication of my life in this book. And it doesn't take much. It just takes getting some sort of a book to keep things in and just throwing things in. That's it. Keepsake artifacts can be other things too. They can be this whale that I made when I was a kid and I think I got this piece of stone in Wells Beach, Maine, and I painted it up to look like a whale. It even has the blowhole on the top. And then I have this, speak no evil, see no evil, hear no evil monkeys. And this used to sit on my dad's desk. And I used to sort of play with this when I was a kid making phone calls. My teenage years, we had to make a phone call from dad's office and this is this was right there on his desk so this is a keepsake and it brings back memories of my teenage years and so this is really important to me and then this is a garden stake lost the stake a long time ago but this was my mom's and it says it's kind of hard to read now because it's kind of old but it says gardeners know the best dirt and so mom had this in her garden and i used to have it in my garden until the stake broke off but now I keep it up in my art room. And this brings back memories of mom's garden. So it brings all these different memories back. So your job, if you're going to do some keepsake artifact art or writing, 
is to pull together some of your keepsakes. What do you have? Do you have things in paper that you can pull together? Do you have funny little, funny little um, sculptures around your house, little knickknacks around your house, little things that you've made? things that are important to you, photographs of family and friends. You need to pull a few of those things together. And then you're gonna need like paper and pencil or watercolor paper or drawing paper, whatever you wanna to do to create around your keepsake artifacts. And I'm gonna show you something that I created. I'm gonna show you the process of creating something I created with this Gardener's Know the Best Dirt keepsake that I have. I looked at this and I thought this would be a really fun thing to make a painting out of. And so here's what I did. First of all, I used watercolor paper. And so I have my pad of watercolor paper here. Again, watercolor paper has nice texture to it and so it helps to grab the color and the water in the paper. And so what I did was I first traced my Gardeners Know the Best Dirt plaque here, I'm going to call it. And I put it on paper and I traced around it. That's all I did. And then I wrote Gardeners Know the Best Dirt and I made some indications for where these pretty I call them sunflowers go, and that's it. I then drew some lines to sort of show me different areas where I'm going to be painting different types of flowers, because this reminds me of my mom's garden, so I'm going to put some flowers in this picture. So here's what I did. I've started one already, and I'm going to show you just a few little techniques on how to do this. Let me move this out of the way a little bit. So I'm going to use watercolor today. And in order to use my watercolor, let me grab this. I'm going to use my spray bottle because my spray bottle, just water in here, just a little spray bottle. You don't have to use this, but it helps. I can now use watercolor like this, little watercolor pots. Or I can choose to use watercolor that comes in tubes. Today I'm just going to use the pots. And what I do is I decide I'm going to make some pansies. And if you look here, here's my drawing, drawn out area here. And here's a pansy that I made already in purple, purples and blues. I think this time I'm going to make more bluish colored pansies. And so to do that, I'm just going to spray the tints of color, the hues, ooh, nice word, that I want for my watercolor pansy. And so since I'm doing blues, I'm going to do a few blues. Just spray them, get them moist. Maybe a little bit of purple there. And I'm going to need some yellow for the center, so I'm already going to go ahead and get that sprayed down. And for this, I'm going to use my chiseled paintbrush. You can use any kind of paintbrush you want, really doesn't matter. I've got my pot of water ready to go because you need to have that handy if you're doing watercolor. I also like to use um, a paper towel close by because I always get too much water on my brush, inevitably, or I get too much paint on my brush and I need to dab it a little bit. So just have, I'm going to have that right handy nearby. So let me get this out of here so it doesn't get wet. And I am going to now show you my tricky technique for making pansies. Since I'm going to do blue, I'm going to get my brush a little bit wet. I'm going to dab it and get it a little bit drier, but wet too, a little moist. And I'm going to use this bright blue to start with. Nice bright blue. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make just a few little marks on here like that. It almost looks like a face. Then I'm going to use some water, more water on my brush, and I'm going to pull the color out of that blue in the form of pansy pebbles, petals, pebbles, petals. And it's okay if the water runs a little bit because that just adds to the 
look of the petals and it makes them almost more natural looking. I'll do another one here. And while that is still wet, I'm going to clean off my brush a bit and I'm going to dab into some of my purple. And here's what's going to happen there. Whoops, see, I got a little bit too much water on my brush, and so I'm going to dab it off. It always happens. And I'm going to add a little purple, and if you just touch it, it sort of runs in to the blue and makes that more natural look that we find in nature. You can always, if it's not dabbing enough, you can add a little bit more color to it. And then, I might even add some black. I don't think I got my black sprayed down, so I'm going to spray down my black. And I'm going to add a little bit of black to this. Because there's always a little black here and there to add to the contrast in our in colors. Sort of brings out the other colors that we're trying to get there. Then I'm going to use my smaller brush. Let me find my tinier brush here, tinier, thinner bristles. I'll get that a little bit wet. Wipe it down, a little wet, wipe it down. And I'm going to add some yellow. So I'm going to put right in the center. You know how a pansy has a little face in the center of it? I'm going to put this right in the center of that. And it, guess what? It's okay if it runs in a little bit. It adds to the color of the pansy. In fact, I might even add a little bit more yellow up, up the sides here. Then, I'm going to go back to my dark, dark blue. And I'm going to add a few little lines that come out. Because pansies sort of have those little lines that come out of the face. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm going to let that dry a little bit before I add a few more little lines. But you can see the idea. Now, it's okay if, you're, if your paints get a little bit muddied, if your yellow gets a little bit of blue in it, if your purple gets a little bit of red in it, or some brown. It doesn't matter. Because if you look at nature, you can see that if you look at a leaf, there's all sorts of colors. It's not a perfect total green leaf. There's always some brown, some red, some yellow, some black in it. So all those colors come together to help us make nature more beautiful all the time. So I'm going to now put this aside and I'm going to show you what I ended up making from this. And I'm going to give you a secret afterwards too. Not a secret, but something fun. So here's what I ended up making. There's my little plaque that I had put right in the middle, and I traced even the imperfections here I traced. So I traced that right there, and I wrote inside, gardeners know the best dirt. I did that in pencil first, and then I used my black Sharpie, and I wrote, wrote it out a couple of times, just make it a little bit darker. I went around the edge of the pencil lines of my outline with my Sharpie just to make it draw out a little bit. And then I made the three flowers here that you see, and then one on the bottom, the sunflowers and some of the leaves around. And then I indicated the different areas where I was going to do new flowers, and I painted my pansies up here. Do you see how all the colors run in? to all the petals, but they look like pretty pansies. Then I did some leaves and stems around them. I did lavender over here, some just free growing lavender with some um, leaves in the background, some grasses in the background. Over here, some sunflowers, just to bring out that yellow that's in the painting. Across the bottom, I did a little bit of wet on wet with uh, greens and browns to make grass on the bottom. And then I added some yellow and some red flowers. And then what I like to do with my, my paintings is I like to, especially if it's, a, if it's a nature painting, I like to take some of the key colors in there 
I get my brush really, really wet, and I go into some of those key colors, and I spray it. I tap it, and I spray. And so you'll see all these, see some yellow dots, and some green, and some blues, and some purples. I don't know, it's just for me, for a nature painting, it sort of brings it all to life. It sort of makes that more look a little bit more vibrant. And so I just like to do that. It's sort of my key signature thing, but you can use it too if you want to. And of course, when you're done, if you end up doing a painting of some of your artifacts, don't forget to sign it because it's a piece of art. No matter what you're going to do with it, this is your work of art. I like this one so much and it's, you know, reminds me of my mom's garden. So I think I'm going to actually frame this and I might hang it on a wall somewhere. You can put a mat around it. You can hang it on a wall just as is. You can put it on your refrigerator. You can put it into your journal so that you can use this as a memory to maybe write from sometime. How fun is that? So all of these different things you can do with your artifacts. You can write about your artifacts. You can, you can write your memories. I can write my memories about my dad's three monkeys. See no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. I can write about how the memory of me talking on the phone is so important to me as a teenager, because that's what teenagers did back then. We didn't have texting. So this is important, and I could write a memoir. You know, I could take this whole book here that I have of all of my different artifact pieces of paper. Look at that, it's like my life. I could write my memoirs. How exciting. But I have something special for you guys because I have taken one of these pieces of paper with the gardeners know the best dirt and I've put it on my website at www.creativitysparks.org and you can download this and you can paint it yourself or you can color it in. So you can use this to make your own special garden drawing or painting. I'd love to see it. I'd love to see what your garden looks like. So send me a picture of it if you end up doing this. You can send it to me at barbara at creativitysparks.org. I really enjoy seeing your artwork. I've been getting a lot of it and I've been posting it online and I've been posting it on our, our website and on Facebook and getting a lot of wonderful responses. People love to see what you're creating. So you can use keepsake artifacts for writing stories, writing memoirs, making paintings or drawings. You can also use it to capture art in photos. And for today's Where Do You Find Art? I found art in photographs that a friend of mine sent me. Her name is Zen Shoemaker, and she sent me this beautiful photo of her keepsake artifacts, and they're all in little shelves. She's got a shelf unit with all these little artifacts, and she likes to write stories about each and every one of these. She can tell you a story about everything that's on this shelf and it really means something to her. So then she sent me a couple of other photos that are close-ups of what's on her shelf. And this one, she's got a little rabbit, bird's nest, an owl, some sweet uh, bracelets here. They all mean something to her. And every one of these pieces has a story behind it. And if you ask Zen, she can tell you about it. She also has this beautiful little sculpture that, and a little note that says, love the child within. And she told me that this came from her mom. And so this is a really special keepsake artifact. And she can tell you all about these things. What do you have at home? And where are you finding art? If you look around, you can find your keepsakes and they're each a piece of art. I'd love to see them. I'd love it for you to share them to me. So let's end today with a quote. And it is from my friend Zen Shoemaker. Because when she sent me these, she told me 
how important keeping these in her shelf are and how important writing about them is to her. So here's her quote from Zen Shoemaker. Things that inspire emotion are worthy of capturing in whatever form moves you. Taking a photo, painting, writing, singing, sculpting, curating. Lovely note to end on today. So thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time.